All right. If you're the toughest, smartest person in any particular room, get the hell out, especially as crazy as the world is, chaotic as the world is, how many changes there goes on in the world. Uh, right now, we have a high percentage. We're in the mid-60s, 52.5% is break-even. And I am very happy. I'm superstitious and happy. We got Josh Luna back on the podcast, College Podcast. When he was on last time, we were close to 67% against the spread. We made a lot of money, and then he talked about going 80% in the college basketball journey. Turn 60 bucks into 2,800 bucks. So we're going to go with, we're going to introduce the very talented, gorgeous, smart. Already first week, she goes 11 and 0. I go 12 and 1. What does that mean? She had a higher percentage of college picking games, working, collaborating together. She had a better percentage than I did. Here we go, week two of the NFL. Melissa has a better percentage than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she's a quick, you know, don't get fooled by the pretty face. She is That's brilliant. Awesome. She's picking so fast, and we're all making money collaborating. But thank you, Melissa, for helping us. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Um, I'm excited to help you all more and help me more <laughs> and win more. <laughs> right on. Let's win. Yes, let's win. Where are your first words, Josh Luna? My first, I cannot wait for this weekend. I could, I could tell you that. We got seven ranked matchups. Seven ranked matchups. Like, I'm, I'm so pumped for this. Let's go. I love college football Saturdays. <laughs> football Saturdays, and it's a great escape. And you were – see, the thing – you bring insight, and I'll get to a UCLA or USC game. We go to the games as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you were in Tuscaloosa, Alabama for a – you know, traditional big game, uh, historical game, as we see Sark is young, Staten's getting old, and we got the dub. Uh, Texas, we, we we had Glick, Adam Glick, who's a beat reporter for the Texas Longhorns. We talked about that. Uh, is that defensive line for Texas legit? Uh, the physicality, could Texas handle physicality in the SEC? And then the third thing, uh, when you get as old as I am, right, you get cynical and jaded. So I always like hanging around, not necessarily hanging around, but interjecting as much as possible, young people, who haven't been screwed over yet by life <laughs> yet, and you haven't developed that deep bitterness. How was the atmosphere in Tascaloosa, right? Was it fun? A lot of young oh. people allowed? So yeah. th those are the three questions I have before we get into this week. The physicality of the Texas uh, defensive line, the atmosphere, kind of getting it an escape, you know, college kids with uh, youthful enthusiasm, right? And a lot of beers. the changes. A lot of beers. <laughs> it, it's illegal to bring beers in there, right? But they do it, right? You bring it in with a uh, – the way I used to do it in Florida, I went to USF. When I went to USF, they didn't have a football team. So we went to US, UF and um, Florida State game. So I used to make friends with the ushers and the security, give them 20 bucks so I can bring in my flask or whatever. <laughs> Or, the beer, or, or sit there in a trailer, right, with your new friends and sit there uh, eating hot dogs and drinking beers and watching games on satellite. How's it like? Well, I'll tell you, Josh, uh, there was no need to bring in extra beers when we had about 15 <laughs> before. But they do sell beer inside. Yeah. Oh, well, they, they do. They, they changed do. that. They, yeah, they changed it a few years ago. Yeah. They, um, we were actually at the NIL cookout, a little tailgate for the NIL with Texas. Oh, wow. The burnt ends, shout out to the burnt ends right there. Showed us wow, great hospitality, nice. great Texas fan base. And no, Texas line was very physical. They dominated Alabama that whole game. They should have won by more. You know, right. Alabama made some mistakes as well, too. Atmosphere from college game day, SEC Nation. The whole the whole thing was just packed. That town was insane. Getting out of that freaking city took like two hours because how many people were there 
and yeah, no, we uh, we got to celebrate with the Texas band after too, which was really fun. So no, that was a big win for them because when you look at the history and you look at the alumni, you know the big money alumni. Uh, I always look at the endowments. You say, Josh, why are you looking at endowments? It tells you how much money the alumni have to pay off the rest. Yeah, literally, because. What, what the endowment is, you know, I'll look at the University of Texas endowment. And you say, you know, I could be crazy. I could be way off, but the money's green and our percentages are high. <laughs> so even if I'm crazy, the money is green, right? Yeah. And what I love about Josh Lynn, I'm taking year on the podcast. He's a witness, right? <laughs> yeah. There is a method behind madness. Hey, when you got Matthew McConaughey, you know, helping you out a little bit. You Ooh. Know? You got some money. <laughs> They're going to win, man. Yeah, Texas Matthew McConaughey. Well. Yeah. We'll work on that, Melissa. Uh, just because I didn't have, you know, now with, I, with you, I have time. Getting Michael um, or whatever his name is, Matthew McConaughey's brother on. He likes to bet games. Yeah. And he's not doing as well as we do. But he bet, he's been betting games forever. He's not going 11 and 0. <laughs> He's not going to love another like Melissa. So the University of Texas has thirty-one billion dollar endowment. That's how much money the alumni has donated to the university, and its investments have gone up. So these people have money to burn. That's why they can go fifty percent just blindly betting Texas, and they lost the national championship to Alabama. Then they offered Nick Satan $10 million a year to go to Alabama. And Nick Satan said no. And it was the whole Colt McCoy thing. If Colt McCoy would have stayed in that game, they would have won in 2009. So very a lot of bitterness with Texas and you know, Oklahoma. Uh, and last question about that game. Wasn't it weird? You were there. Yeah. Wasn't it weird? Texas pretty much dominated the game. But it was pretty much tied in the fourth quarter. Alabama had a chance. If Milrow, it, it, it got to the point where Milrow had to make a read, he couldn't, right? You couldn't see the guy underneath that it was zone. He just went back there and fired, fired off. Fired they were winning stress, 16 bro. to 13. They were winning yeah. 16, you know, in the second quarter, third quarter, Texas didn't really look too well. They didn't look too hot. They couldn't move the ball. Alabama's defense is still there. You know, they're still right. a dominant right. team. But – they just lacked that offensive skill. They couldn't get the ball to the outside players. They couldn't run the ball on the Texas D line. But yeah, when you got a quarterback that is run first, and you know that one touchdown, that forty-nine yard touchdown they had was that was a lack of coverage on Texas. You know that was a Texas right. Team. So yeah, a lot of a lot of nervousness and jitterness with Texas. I thought, but yeah. I was in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, yeah, yeah same. I thought Alabama came out. You know a little. That quarterback, man, he if they had a quarterback, they'd be a team I'd worry about. But good luck in the SEC. That Ole Miss game looks scary too for them. But we'll probably get you know, to that later. And and you know, Melissa was talking about you know, college literally, you know, the reason college is simple for you, Melissa. Number one, you're brilliant, you're a genius, you're very smart. You pick things up very fast. That's another mm -hmm. reason you're the other part of it is that life has taught you and taught Josh Luna and I to be very cynical. <laughs> Not that we want to be cynical. It's just the way it is. Contrarians. First week, Josh, he's a uh, very logical pick, right? Picking the favorite on the road on Monday Night Football. You didn't know about the curse, the, the illogical curse. But I'm very impressed by that. He's very contrarian. She's like, no, Josh is full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> the bills are going to cover. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, that, and that's why it's easy. And sitting at the sports book, you know, I owned the restaurant. And at the end of the, you know, I owned it for six years. The last couple of years, uh, you know, when the money pressure was kind of gone a little bit, where, I, where we knew what we had to do to execute and make money, uh, it was sociology watching people. And in Vegas, so many people blindly bet Alabama. That it was, you know, it's like, man, that's what makes them listen so far ahead uh, of most people. I'm going to charge my phone really quick. I'll be right back. Right. 
Hurry, no problem. Drop. Just getting my phone charger. Yeah. But if you live in the past, you die in the past. That's right. All right. So we'll catch up, Josh, when he comes back. Oh, yeah. What's no, the first game we're going to look at? All right. What's the first game we're going to look at? Um, Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Now, I got some insight. Uh, I can't say it. I'll say it next year. But uh, <laughs> that, that Texas A&M staff, uh, the Bobby Petrino, a lot of Eagles involved, the coach is making $9.5 million a year. And when you're making that kind of money, there's a lot of jealousy involved. There's a lot of haters. And then you have, you know, administrative staff, Bean Connors. They're looking for any little mistake to get you out of there. Ask Mel Tuck, making $9.5 million a year. He did something very, 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 very stupid. But he got no grace. Gone. Uh, Bobby Petrino, he had a $5 million a year job as a head coach of Arkansas. And he was always known as a scumbag. You can't trust him as far as you can throw him. And he's having an affair with his gorgeous secretary. He drives his motorcycle into a tree. That's how he got found out. Oh and that's goodness. how he lost his job. Uh, similar things are going on, but Jimbo Fisher is in Texas, and the culture has changed. So no woke Texas, no woke Peter. You can do whatever you want. So Mel Tucker in Texas uh, would have gotten away with a lot. So Jimbo Fisher is getting away with a lot. Last year, he came out on their tax return. They spent a, a million dollar per recruit. It's insane because they had they that, deducted it from the tax. Would they go four and eight last year? <laughs> they went four and eight. You say, "Oh, we're trying to integrate. We're getting him now." It was supposed to be the best class ever, or whatever. Yeah, but it's execution. It's, I mean, maybe Alabama had a better class than uh, than Texas, but tech, you know, come on, Texas, thirty eight billion. They got their people, so. Texas A&M, their endowment $19 billion with a B. There's a lot of money involved. So that's why we can make money. They have money to pay us. Uh, Texas A&M minus the seven points. Bobby Petrino, trying to get his life together, is now the offensive coordinator for Texas A&M. So you got to think of the plotting that goes on during the summer. I like Texas a and in the SEC. We're going to concentrate, like we did when uh, Luna was on last couple of years ago, on the Pac-12 and the SEC. We follow everything, and if something jumps out at us, we'll do it. But this is money. So we're going to go with the conferences we know the best. Uh, and again, I'm a wealth manager. So technical analysis, people looking at charts and trending lines and all that, Nobody's ever gotten rich doing that. People have gotten rich with fundamental analysis. And part of fundamental analysis is corporate governance. And no people in any kind of business have more control over their people than the head coach, right? You noticed that. Didn't you notice that? The military, you're in the military. You're an ex-Marine. The military-like position in control, like when Nate, Nick Satan comes out on the field, or Sarkeesian comes out on the field, the control they have over their environment. That's why we look at these people closely. And before the podcast, I was talking to Melissa. Some people don't get that there's different types of intelligence. Somebody could be a brilliant scientist over here and be a complete retard. Just you're like, what? Why did he do that? He's a smart man. Mel Tucker is a smart man. $9 million a year. He's made a lot of good decisions. And and, and people don't get this also. What, what you are in your social life, you have to be the opposite in business, right? You give your drug addict, family man, you just give him 100 bucks. At a job, you got to act differently. You can't just be giving money away to people <laughs> for no reason, you know? So, so when you look at Auburn, 
And Hugh Freeze, the head coach of Auburn, figure this out for me, Melissa. Uh, he, and it's been 100% of my life, and my dad's a pastor. The holy rollers, people that are talking about religion and God all the time, they're the ones you have to watch out for the most. They're going to do something crazy, you know what I mean, or something shady is going on, whatever. So Hugh Freeze has a beautiful wife that stays with him. And they're like, well, what are you talking about staying with him? He's making five, year, $5 million a year, head coach in Mississippi. He's recruiting in Tampa. And I had a roommate that was a dancer. And she told me, hey, this coach keeps calling for prostitutes. So before the news came out, I was like, man, this guy's a holy roller. Da, da, da. So he gets busted for prostitutes. Uh, and it was shady the way he got busted. Uh, Mississippi State hired private detectives. And they hacked it to his phones. And he was dialing prostitutes for a minute, you know, to set up whatever date. So now he goes to Liberty University, rehabilitates himself. Uh, he's still holy roly dumping. God this, Jesus that, you know. And uh, it's just weird, right? And he's supposed to mentor people. He's supposed to mentor young men. So he's going against Texas A&M that needs to win, needs the money. For that reason, Josh Luna, what do you think? I'm going Texas A&M minus seven. Oh, minus seven, you said? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Because how he, he, it's right his now first now. year in the program. Uh, coaches work in two-year cycles. It's the first year in the cycle. They don't have a quarterback going in there. And this is a must-win situation to keep the $9.5 million a year job cooking. Yeah. No, I think yeah, I think a &M for sure. I mean, it's already jumped up the spread for a &M, and yeah, it's just, they're not that caliber of a team to do, to go win in Cal field this year. They're not there. Right, and then they, they played Cal. Cal should have beat Auburn. They actually physically beat Auburn. Uh, it's just mental, the mental side of it. You saw that with Alabama. It was just mental stuff, the jitters with Texas uh, that, that made that game closer than what it is. So, Texas a &M minus seven. You like that, Josh? Yeah. No, you I like love that, Melissa? Yeah. I love that. All right. We're making money, and uh, we're learning about people at the same time. It's weird, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, you know, how they make decisions, how they're going to run their team, so – you get to the truth so you can get ahead of outcomes. Mm -hmm. And then Melissa goes to 11 and 0 and looks at the bottom. Boo, all right, bam. Get some Bitcoin, buy some groceries. <laughs> and that's what it's about, seeing that. And I'm glad I was able to share that with, with uh, Melissa Josh. When you look at your bank world, you're like, what? It blew up. <laughs> and I didn't parlay. I bet every game individually because this is a crazy world we live in. I imagine that on a parlay, that 11 and 0. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, talking about Petrino with that it's chance, funny. Though. Talking about Petrino with a you know a young mistress and driving the you know motorcycle into a tree and looking for five million dollar job and Hugh Freeze calling prostitutes. You reminds me of uh, Jimmy Buffett, right? Some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know <laughs> it's my own damn fault. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett just died. Oh, yeah. All um, right. Rest in peace, yeah. Rest in peace. Jimmy, you know, he, he bragged about how, how much pot he sold in the Florida Keys. If I bragged about selling that much pot, I would be in jail. Josh Luna would be in jail. Melissa would be in jail. <laughs> the people Maybe, just get away with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Money laundering was still a drunk song. What's the next game we're going to look at, Melissa? <laughs> um... Let's see, Oregon. All right, the Oregon Ducks. Colorado. Uh, Colorado, they lose their best player. First year with your cycle. Uh, there's a lot of hype. And more than that, we know that during the summer, coaches only take like two weeks off. During the summer, they plot against certain teams. And 
Coach Prime, because he played in the NFL, uh, because he has a really good personality, uh, he's he was going toe to toe with Oregon for recruits. And Dan Lanning, and Dan Lanning's a very interesting guy, because Dan Lanning didn't play a lot of football. He's just a smart guy who said, "Hey, uh, I don't want to be in the corporate world. I want to be in the football world." And he talked his way into being a coach. He doesn't really know X's and O's, but he knows the business side and he knows how to sell. And he's, he, he's his pet project. He's taking very seriously. And he got into what are the three f- football mafia families? Melissa. What was that? Sorry. <laughs> the ADHD what, what, yeah. like- <laughs> <laughs> what are the three uh, football mafia families? Oh gosh, um, Bill Belichick. Ding, ding, ding! Bill Belichick and Nick Satan, which Josh Jim, went to see. Jim Harbaugh and then Andy Reid. Boom! Nailed it. See how smart she is. Third week, yeah. Jerry is linking how you make money with the Mafia family. So Dan Lanning comes from that Satan Mafia family. All right, so. Uh, these are very mean, ridiculous people. So he was plotting. He, I read a book years ago, you know, 40 years ago. If somebody talks to you for a half hour, they will tell you their whole life story. You know everything there is to know about. That's why people are dumb and they confess. The first 48, right? It's a whole show based yeah. on that. Just get people talking, they confess. They do stupid, people confess over stupid stuff. Intelligent, brilliant people confess, you know. It's like a human nature thing. So Dan Lanning, during the summer, when he started going at Coach Fryer, told me that he studied Coach Fryer. And Coach Fryer uh, has a simple Florida State for- formula from 40 years ago where, you know, bar none. That's another interview we got to do. Bar none. When the Super Bowl was Steve Young and uh, Jerry Rice and won a national title with Florida State. Right after Dion left, back in the day, when we were at a street football game 40 years ago, and Dion was coming from Fort Myers, we were at St. Pete, and Dion thought it was crazy because I tried to tackle him. Yeah, you're nuts. <laughs> but uh, I digress. So Dion Lane knows everything there is to know about him. Uh, man, that was a brutal game against Colorado State last week. Colorado State came to play. Yeah, Colorado State probably should have won that game. So Colorado's a beat-up football team. Uh, Bo Nix, man. Uh, Bo Nix. I always thought he was a great quarterback. What do you think, uh, Jocelyn? So I like, for that many other reasons, I like your Oregon Ducks and Phil Knight. If you ever want to read a really good business book, it's uh, the, it's uh, Chew Dog by Phil Knight. He confesses on them. He intentionally wrote several million-dollar checks he knew he would bounce. Another thing that Melissa, Josh, and Josh would go to jail for, we did that a few times. <laughs> but he oh, got away with it. So it was a very good business book. He's donated a billion dollars to Oregon and 500, 500 million to Oregon State. He's got a graduate degree so before Oregon State. So the rest, the culture, uh, it's going to be a bad day for Colorado. And the mustard be off the hot dogs, like Trick Hearn used to say. What do you think about that pick? Josh Luna, Oregon, minus 21 I, against Coach I love, Prime. I love Coach Prime. I love what they're building over there. But that performance against Colorado State last week just did not look good. I don't I don't like that they're not going to play. You know, they're playing the game without their best player in Hunter. Right. And it's in Oregon. I mean, they've been practicing all week with that sound. They're, that's, right. that's not going to get them ready for the real thing at Autzen. Oregon big. Oregon's going to look good. Yeah, and it's a simple offense they were running and whatever, so the guy plotting against them. Remember, Dan Lanning won a national title with Kirby Smart as part of the Nick Satan, Bill Bell Street, football mafia family. So they win games, man. Uh, and another thing before we move on, in Vegas, I noticed African-American people betting blindly Dion. <laughs> and of course, how do I read that? 
The line's going to go up. Yeah, that, right? uh, they're just banning blindly Dion because Dion's black. Because Dion. Because he's preaching, yeah, man. Dion. He's preaching. But, and that's the thing. You know, people can preach. I can hug you, whatever, but money's money. <laughs> yeah. That's true. He's not a miracle worker. He's a great recruiter, not a miracle worker. He's a great marketing guy. He's always has been. Uh, but as much money as he made, he was broke five years ago. I had more money than him five years. But kudos for him not giving back, you know, not giving up and coming back and marketing himself and coaching college. Uh, let's go next game. What do you think, Josh Luna? And Melissa, Melissa's watching college now. Uh, Harbaugh, the, the Harbaugh Mafia oh, yeah. family. Michigan and North think short term. Uh, businessmen and women think long term. And you look at Michigan, Michigan again, they have an endowment in the uh, 30 billions. They have the highest per capita income and they have the high, highest alumni group in the country. Rutgers is run by the mafia, Tony Soprano types. <laughs> Seven guys. And they have Fiano there like a mob. And, and Fiano, again, he, after the whole Sandusky thing came out, and Melissa, the Sandusky thing was at Penn State, one of the revered, and I, have, I interviewed one of the players from Joe Paterno, revered coach. So the, what ended up happening was the defensive coordinator, who was also revered, a legend in that area, was a and uh, Shiano knew about it. And Shiano only reported it to one person. He didn't report it to the police or anybody else. He heard kids being raped in the shower. So the only person that would hire him was Urban Meyer, who's shady as hell. And, you know, he, he ended up being a professional coach. He got fired from there. Urban Meyer hired him. It's kind of floating around. Bill Belichick hired him. But Kraft and his kid said, hey, we can't have this guy. This guy's weird. So how do you deal with a situation like that, Melissa? I mean, Chiano is not allowed in my home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? And Rutgers owes $100 million, right? Because it's a mafia run. And you steal the money. What does the mafia do? Steal. Uh, so they're going to Michigan. You're going to get killed. And it's going to be under 43. But in a professional setting, how do you deal with somebody like that, Melissa? Professionally? <laughs> kind of hard to. <laughs> Professionally. <laughs> um, I'm not hearing you in my land. You don't hear me? Do you hear me now? No. Oh, no. Yes. Okay. Right. Hold on. Let me Let's see if this works better. Does that work better? Yeah, it's better okay. now. So I was... think, how do you work with somebody like that? It, that's one of the things I like about owning my own business. I don't have to work with somebody like that. Well, and again, he's supposed to mentor a young men at work. And I'm sure he does a halfway decent job. But mm -hmm. He's always been weird. Uh, his best player in college was Ray Rice, right? What happened to Ray Rice? He knocked out his wife on camera, lost his pro career. So it's always really bad things happening around Triana. Mm -hmm. So in this case, he's not going to be able to score against Michigan. But it's kind of tough to watch. To this day, I, I barely watch Rutgers. What are you thinking about that whole situation, Melissa? So we look at the corporate governance and make money. Yeah, I mean, I was saying professionally, I don't think I'd be able to handle it professionally. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. At all. I mean, it'd be a very tough situation, and um, I'd try to get rid of any People have to make a living, but being a college coach and the competency of it, mm -hmm. then I got to score points. What do you think, Josh? Under 43 all the way, right? Can you hear uh, Luna? Uh, I think. He, oh, yeah. Uh, I was on mute. My bad. Oh, okay. Cool. I was getting a phone call, and I didn't want you guys to oh, cool, hear cool, the thanks. ringtone. But no, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the same. Michigan's just gonna look like them as gum. They're gonna step on them and just not even worry about them. 
I think they're probably going to win like 35 to 6, something like that. Maybe 30 to 3. They're going to save some of the plays for later down the line. Right. All right. So salesmen think short-term, businessmen and women think long-term. Harbaugh family is thinking long-term. They're not going to show too much for an office. They don't have to because Rutgers is a mess. Mm-hmm. What's the next game we're going to look at, Melissa? Uh, let me get to this Cincinnati. Right. And I had a good time doing the Big 12 podcast with Adam Glick. Uh, and you have to do it during the summer because life is chaotic and uncertain. You got to be ahead of the game and knowing how the trajectory of the season is going to go along. Now, maybe we'll disagree on this one, Josh and Luna, but Oklahoma and Coach Venables now, Dabo Sweeney disciples are like Bill Belichick and Sean Payton without uh, Drew Brees and Bill Belichick without Tom Brady. The 30%. Venables had a down year last year. He hasn't played anyone. Cincinnati is not that good, but you got to look at the situation. Oklahoma has to high plays because all their big money alumni, all that big oil money, they want to beat Texas October the 7th. But they don't want to put anything on film. They can beat Cincinnati playing basic football. It's going to be at Cincinnati. The coach at Cincinnati is the guy that used to do all the upsets at Appalachian State. So he knows how to do more with less. He knows how to scheme. It might be a recruiting game. So I like a close loss here. And I'm getting it close to a key number, plus 14. But what do you think, Josh Luna? The Cincinnati Bearcats at home, plus 14 against Boomer Sooner. Yeah, I'm thinking this game. Let me let me see. Yeah, this game is a – okay. So, you know, Oklahoma has been blowing everyone out of the water. They've just been dominating the first couple of weeks. They're going to get a first real test on the road. Cincinnati's still trying to get the first Big 12 win. They, You know, they want to welcome themselves – to the Big 12, right. and this game is a 9 a.m. game for the Pacific Coast. Over there in Cincinnati, it's 11 a.m. Oh, right. you you know, it's going to be an early game for them. It might get a little sloppy. Definitely think OU is going to win, and, you know, it might be a little closer than, you know, what people say. And then, But I, I, I'm saying I like Cincinnati with that 14 for sure. Sloppy game. Oklahoma's looking forward to Texas in a few weeks. They have to keep up right. with them. They're going to be like Michigan. They're not going to show their hand. They're just going to, they're going to do what they can to win this game and get out of there with the W. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So Cincinnati Bearcats plus a fourteen at home. So you got to look at the situation to make money, to m- making Melissa money. What's the next even game? That, even that over under. I don't know. A fifty seven and a half right there. Fifty seven and a little half. under. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go under? Yeah, we're going to go under. We're going to all add the spreadsheet. This isn't be- a prime time. This these aren't the offenses that we've seen with Cincinnati at least the last couple of years. Right. It's not a prime time game. It's an early game. That freaking Ohio Heat is going to get to them. I know they're used to the Oklahoma Heat, but yeah, that's. It's, I'm looking. Yeah, the guy, Cincinnati has to keep everything in front of them, right? Yeah. So their only chance they have is for it to be an under game. And I was never, <clears throat> never been impressed with Dylan Gabriel. He was a you can't finish, you know, playing us with USF. And, you know, the way he's played, so he's hurt. So something's going on with him. What's the next game we're going to look at, Melissa? Utah. The Utah Jew- Utes. Again, confession. Willingham randomly talking media days about he's a defensive guy that you, you used to win with defense. I thought, oh, he's listening to the podcast, listening to what I'm saying. If you live in the past, you die in the past. How about defense? And that's like, oh, it's because you lost to Chip Kelly. Right? He says, oh, most games are won by offense, uh, 55%, 40 by defense, 15% special teams. He's obsessing about Chip Kelly because he lost to him. A guy who's been coaching 20 years, he's making north of $5 million a year. He hates losing. He hates losing to certain people. Uh, and, you know, he's a very, very conservative guy. Chip Kelly is a fat gay guy. So it probably runs the wrong way again. So, kind of clash. Going to Utah, UCLA, 
uh, the quarterback situation is unstable. Dante Moore, Gabbert, uh, he has a complicated offense. First year, over to your cycle. And it's a big mismatch between Ludwig, the offensive coordinator at Utah, who's about to get a head coaching job somewhere, and Anthony Lynn's son, who's a defensive coordinator for the first time in his life. In a big game on the road. It was plus six earlier. I'm going to let you look at the money line. I'm thinking maybe three ways of this. Let me look at the money line in Utah. See if it makes any sense at all. I'm going to buy the half a point, get it to six, get it to three. It was six. People are overvaluing uh, Cam Rising. So I'm going to get the board out, fix uh, the sharing thing, Melissa. I'm going to do a basic betting lesson plus one. Plus one is very important that game Luna was at. Because you can only go so far. Millwall could only get plus one so many times. You have to go back and read the defense. Uh, so Utah relies on that plus one. They rely on the running game. They rely on the plus one. And anybody can run the plus one. Uh, so I like I like uh, the Utah Utes minus a three. And I'm going to look at the money line on that. What do you think, uh, Josh Lewin? Uh you know, I'm thinking with my heart on this one. Go Bruins. <laughs> can't do that. UCLA fan, but because of right. that, you can't you can't do that. You can't think with your heart. So this one's t- t- tough for me. Oh, Utah's won 26 or 27 of, of the out of the last 28 at home. Crazy home record. UCLA hasn't won at in Salt Lake City since 2015. I'm right. a Bruin fan. I know how we play up there. It's never it's never pretty. We just lost up there 49 to three couple of years ago right different team different ucla team they beat them last year dante moore's first time in a hostile environment that right. sandy san diego state snap dragon Re- stadium definitely not hostile when a quarter is ucla fans so i i think utah might get run away with this late in the fourth yeah and that game's going to be at 12 30 yeah but go bruins yeah, in, in in one thing, you know, traveling to Alabama, the culture of games are so different. Yeah. You know, and that's diversity too, kind of learning different cultures. You sit in a trailer with a satellite drinking beers, the people you just met, and the time and hot dogs and talking crap. But then when you tailgate with UCLA fans, because I grew up in LA, you know, pretty much a UCLA fan, but when uh, Luke Walton went to Arizona, and Walton told him to go to Arizona State at UCLA. I'm like, I didn't even graduate from UCLA. UCLA graduates are acting like this. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll bet. I'll bet UCLA games. Uh, when you tailgate with UCLA people, they're just as nice, but instead of beer, you you're drinking wine. <laughs> you know, West Coast wine. You're drinking wine. You're having cheese. You know, you're just a very different thing. And you know. I live on the I'm born on the West Coast, I live on the East Coast, but I have a big mouth. When I'm tailgating with UCLA West Coast people, I gotta wash my mouth. I gotta chill. When I'm in the Northeast, whatever, I can talk as much shit as possible. People don't, you know. It's a pop. But UCLA wine, wine you know, neither is bad or good. It's just different. Uh, so it's, it's gonna be a different environment. Now, the money line. Let me look at the money line on this. Because uh, people run with bad information. They do it in the stock market. Uh, profess- you know, they, they run on bad information. They hear something on ESPN. I haven't watched ESPN for 12 years now. ESPN is dying. They watch something on ESPN. Uh, they say cam rising this, cam rising that. In a game like this, it doesn't matter. Decisions were made during the summer, right? So I, if if I can get 179, I'm going to go Utah minus 179. And then the total on that game, because every single UCLA game went over last year, and we made money on that angle. Uh, it's a different year. So UCLA – is playing more conservative defense, the rest of the likes of the defense, and trying to protect the quarterback as well, right? They don't want the quarterback, new quarterback, to be trying to come back from a deficit. 
So give me under 53, Melissa. So give me money line 175. Remember, if I win two out of three, that's 60, uh, 63%, 52.5% is break even. So I've watched my UCLA game. I enjoyed my UCLA game. And I made money doing so. And I've been always pragmatic about UCLA. <laughs> I'm like, UCLA works great. It's almost like the Lakers. I'll be a Laker fan again when Polinka gets fired. <laughs> Still a Laker fan. I'm just mad. Uh, but UCLA made a lot of money on UCLA games. UFC games. You know, at the same time, rooting for them, cursing out people on the East Coast. That's what I hate about Pac-12 disintegrate. But I digress. So give me Utah minus three, uh, minus one seventy five. That's not bad. Anything under two fifty, you can you do it, the math works out, and it's going to be under fifty three. What do you think, Josh? Sounds good. That sounds good to me. That sounds yeah, good. yeah. I mean, we're 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 we'll play defense. We're, exactly. There. We're the night before Friday. We're sitting at the win in Vegas, and we're talking about what we're going to bet tomorrow. So we can catch those tickets. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh yeah. What's the next game we're gonna look at, Melissa? Uh UConn. All right. So this is Jim Mora, former UCLA coach. And Jim Mora was doing a great job at UCLA. And then he got divorced. Then he got depressed. Then certain players that he recruited, uh, the academic staff then let into UCLA. So he pretty much quit. But he, his dad was a football coach. He's always been married to the game of football. That's why he got divorced, neglected his kids. Now he's at UConn cashing tickets for us. As a huge dog, he's covered a lot for us. Uh, they're an independent. And UConn, is, it's, it's a weird area because top five states for recruiting are California, Texas, Louisiana, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. So he he's, he can recruit that Pennsylvania, New Jersey area. And he's doing a good job. And he's a defensive-minded coach, keeps things games close. So when you're looking at plus 23 over the key number of 21, he can still get blown out. Remember, this is the guy who has a winning record as an NFL coach, right? And he's done better recently than any UCLA coach. I mean, Chip Kelly is below 500. Uh, Darrell was way below 500 before him. So the Brent Huntley and stuff like that, he did actually a good job at UCLA. So he can still get blown out and still score a late touchdown to backdoor cover for us. What do you think, Josh Lou? You know, that's exactly how I feel this game is going to be. I think Duke is just – are, you know, we know they're the better team. They've played better competition. I don't really like the UConn team. Don't really follow them too much. I just know they're not going to keep up with Duke. But I am, I'm, you know, hoping that backdoor cover happens. I can't see them beating them by 30 points. And it's going to be at UConn. So I could see them, you know, pulling out a 21-point L, but covering. Right. Maybe and Melissa, what, what a backdoor cover field. is, is one team is killing the other team. And the other team, just for false hope, just to keep people from not getting too depressed, they, they score like a meaningless touchdown at the end. And there was no way they were going to win. And there's like the managers out there, all the skinny kids. So, like, stop. Yeah. And they score, but we lose money. So, you, you got to, that's why the corporate governors, huh? Does this guy like to blow people out mercilessly? Mm -hmm. Is he a dumbass? Who shows his cards at the beginning of the season and loses late because he wants to blow out people, right? The Duke guy is it again. Duke has twenty billion dollar endowment. Duke's an academic school, even though USF has the same accreditation as Duke. Uh, they they don't blow people out because they don't have the resources. All right, what's the next thing we're gonna look at, Melissa? Memphis, I believe. All right, Memphis. FedEx, Memphis and Missouri. They, it, it's a great recruiting area. 
uh, a very corrupt area that those five cops saw what those five cops did. And the it's a mix. They get a lot of guys who get thrown out of SEC school, the metropolitan area. A lot of people like to go back to that area. Uh, the South is a very talent-rich area. And Memphis has players. Uh, I like their coach, Starterfield. He's like Dan Lanning. He's not much of an X's and O's guy. He's a business sales guy. He talked himself into a $4 million job coaching Memphis. Uh, they're at home. No, actually, they're, they're at Missouri. I watched the Missouri-Kansas State game. And Kansas State went toe to toe with them. Kansas State, they're in a cycle, right? In the first year or two year cycle. Last year was a big cycle where they almost won it all. This year they go in for, and they really had Missouri beat. Uh, Dirkowitz, got to give him credit, failing forward. He hasn't won anything, gets a new contract, making millions upon millions of dollars. Memphis has a lot more physical talent than Kansas State. There's no fear factor. They're a bunch of gangsters. You know, when you have a bunch of gangsters on your team, it could be hit or miss because of the lack of discipline. They might not be as disciplined as Missouri. They might not be as disciplined as Kansas State, but they have a lot of talent, right? So I like Memphis to lose by a field goal. What do you think, Josh Luna? Yeah, I think Missouri – honestly, I think Missouri is a pretty solid team over them. In the SEC, they've kind of been building themselves up the last couple of years. They had Georgia on the ropes last year, on the ropes, and it's in it's over there in Missouri too, right? It's, it's I'm just gonna right. double check that, yeah. But when you look at that, it's almost like Duke Clemson, right? Duke put yeah. everything they had to be Clemson. Clemson was just playing vanilla. So when yeah. you know when Georgia plays Missouri, they're like, oh, whatever, Missouri. We gotta keep things in our back pocket for. The SEC title. Oh, yeah. I'm Not thinking, if, you know, I think Missouri might get – I think it might be a push, to be honest with you. Yeah. They might get it at six. I don't think they're going to be, you know, too – they're going to whoop on Memphis because Memphis has a solid team themselves. I am yeah. I am worried about a letdown with Missouri as well, too, because it is a home game coming off of that big win last week. But, uh, you know, look look for Missouri. 61-yard field goal. It was a 60-yard yeah, field goal. Crazy. And then Missouri, Missouri has to hide things for the SEC season. They can't. So the coach has to make a play, make a decision. Are we going to show, put on film, show Kirby Smart saying what we really do against Memphis? They're out of our conference, whatever. We just need to beat them. And Memphis is no pushover. You know, I know Navy they didn't have the best showing the week prior, but they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to compete with Missouri on the field. Their talent wise, they're they're not, not you know too far off from them. Not at all, not at all. They're, Memphis is a sleeping giant. It's just uh, you know politics involved. And then Pat the last game, like, Pat two. Go game. look, go look at Memphis. <laughs> have yeah. you been to Memphis? Beale Street. I have not. Not yet. Memphis and Nashville, man, good cities to listen to music and eat ribs. They get That's kind of southern culture. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Oh, you know, this game, I didn't even realize where the game's being played. Which you know one? Uh, Memphis, Memphis, Missouri? Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know Memphis where... is at Missouri. They're going to no. go down to the Mississippi River. Yeah, this game is in St. Louis. Oh, the game's in St. Louis. It's like yeah. a neutral state game. Yeah, so it's a neutral – yeah. So – even even more towards Memphis, you know, they're gonna come in there and compete. This is a neutral site, more towards Missouri, but it's right. not like and, they get and, the home field. And coaches, and that's what we can get ahead of them. So they're so rigid. Football players are so rigid that the fact that they're not playing in their normal home, like that kid hitting that 61 yard field goal, he did it at home. You know what angle to do, where the lump on the field is, where the wind's gonna be in the same, da da da. They're not gonna have that there. And, uh, again, every single big major program has independently wealthy people who do not work, and all they do is give money to the football team and travel with the team. So Memphis is going to have 10,000, 20,000 people 
we now can go to the game, right? Because when it's a normal game, uh, it depends who it is, right? Alabama, they uh, they cheated Texas, right? They they didn't give them the full allotment of seats and so, the band, right? They put the Texas band in a weird spot. You can't do that in a neutral site game. So it's going to be uh, the Memphis cheerleaders are going to be there. The band, uh, yeah, twenty thousand instead of having five thousand fans in the end zone up top, right? You're going to have maybe twenty thousand people there. Yeah, and, and you know they're Memphis. not going to they're not going to travel as well as they could if they're home cooking. You know, exactly. Memphis is just right up the road, or is just right down the road from St. Louis. Right, the Mississippi River. Yeah, so if you're watching that show on Netflix, the Ozarks, mm-hmm. uh, about <laughs> some yeah. cruises and stuff like that, going down the Mississippi River, going back and forth, down right. with Biloxi. All right, man, I feel good. You know, it's a whole process starting during the summer. It's great to have somebody like Josh Luna and somebody as smart as Melissa. It's no man's an island, and sports betting is about collaboration. As crazy as chaotic as life is be able to work with people to make money, have fun watching the games. Something very special that we got going here. Missouri better take Memphis serious. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Huh? <laughs> I said Missouri better take Memphis serious because, yeah, that I didn't realize it was a neutral site. That's even – Memphis might go yeah. in and steal that one. And bottom line, Fred Smith being a billionaire, multi-billionaire, donating a billion dollars to the program, what does that mean? Now it's legal. It used to be illegal. Coach – can pay for a key player or a certain guy. He can come with cash to go to Memphis, <laughs> right? Because they, they're going to have talent. It's a matter of coaching him up and the discipline of ball. Talking about great coaches, and I feel bad for this guy. Uh, he gets his chance. And <clears throat> one thing I learned about the corporate world, uh, you know, when my mom passed away, I went into the restaurant, I kept hearing her voice. I said, I mean, I got to go to the corporate world for a little bit. And one thing I learned about the corporate world was that people that get promotions are mentored. Doesn't mean they're smart or talented. They just know the CEO, they know somebody, or they went to the right school, blah, blah, blah. And they get mentored to go up the corporate ladder. I'm like, how isn't it, that's not fair. It's not merit, it's not talent. It's uh, mentorship. What? So, Coach at Washington State has learned that hard lesson. He pulls himself up with the bootstraps, gets to Washington State, becomes the head coach after Mike Leach uh, leaves, does a great job, and now he gets screwed over. And now they're basically the Mountain West. Uh, He's a great coach, obsessed with the game of football. He's, he's got nothing up there in Pullman. And he has a decent team. He figures out a way. He got Cameron Ward. He got from Incarnate Word. Uh, yeah. He's made him into a really good quarterback. Oregon State's not world beaters. We got an inside from Florida State because Chad's brother played for Oregon State. Chad was inside the program. And we got some inside information. So the way Oregon State plays, uh, since they don't have the talent, since uh, Phil Knight gave a billion to Oregon and gave them five hundred million, it's still a lot less. They don't have the resources, so they have to have a certain style of play. They have to control the ball, the line of scrimmage. They have to run it, and they have to play zone defense and wait for other people to make mistakes. All that to say that Washington State, because they lost to them last year, similar to Coach Willingham. I like Washington State this year in Pullman, especially with both those fan bases getting screwed over. Those Pullman people are getting screwed over more. So Pullman needs every single win they can get. What do you think, Josh? And then you've been watching the Pac-12 your whole life here in the West Coast. Oh, yeah, I know. It's been heartbreaking to see what's been going on. This is yeah. the game college game day should have been at. <laughs> right, exactly. I wish they would have been at this one, Pac-2. The battle for the Pac-2, the real Pac-12 champion. And, right. yeah, Washington State, and I love how they've been together. Wazoo and Oregon State, you know, they've been really united about it. Right. Great. It's going to be a fun matchup. I love that Oregon State team. I love their O-line. Not in Pullman. 
I think Wazoo is going to steal this victory. Yeah. So you want to sprinkle a little bit of the money line? Oh, I I think Waz. I'm putting it on the money line, but I know that they could cover. Sure. Yeah. That's the great thing about collaborations. Crazy week. Things happen. Things happen with clients. So I knew Washington State was going to cover, but the success we have and Josh Luna gets things fast too, man. We started Scope rolling with this- college and pro when we did that. So Josh Luna is a quick learner too. So I'm very fortunate to have very two quick learners in as money in our pocket that nobody can argue with, with us about. You don't need any mentorship or any crap or any politics, <laughs> right? So yeah. let me see what the money line is in that. Let's get last, that W, Wazer. Last year, the game was 10, uh, well, 24 10. I like the over 53. It's early in the season, they got to keep things in front of them. Uh, I like the under as well. Let me look at the money line because I'm going to bet the money line in Washington State. And that game comes on later on. So we're going to have some fun. It's Saturday. I would have drank a few beers by that time. Oh, yeah. By that time, 4 p- yeah, it's 4 p.m. It's kind of early. But you want to be able to clink the clock by, by that time. Uh, under 58. What do you think, Josh? Luda? Under 58. I'm thinking I'm going to stay away. <laughs> yeah. I, I know Washington State, that offense can get, get it going. I know Oregon State, you know, they can make some plays because that Wazoo defense is suspect as well. But right. 58 seems really high. I'm just – I'm going to take Wazoo to cover. But It, it was 24-10 last year. Twenty, Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So that – it was way under. Way under. Way under. Big time under. Big time Big under. Time. Big time under. No, I mean – So I'm going to play gonna for that. the numbers, right? You went two out of three. Yeah. 56% over 52.5%. So if Washington State covers a three and Oregon State wins when the game goes under, I make money. If the game goes over, I lose money. So it's plus 130. So that's pretty good money. So you bet, uh, I'll bet 500 bucks. So I'll get like, you know, 700 bucks back. Let's go. Let's go, Cougars. It's called collaboration to make money from a trusted source. Thank you, Josh Luna. Let's go. Helping me think through that game. Plus one third. Really, in a way, it is structured for Washington State to win the game. Believe me, if it's close, the rest are calling it for Washington State. Those those people need a win. Under 58. What do you think, Melissa? Yeah, that sounds good to me. I was looking at the numbers right now, and I mean, sounds re- reasonable. Nice. So we got we got 11 results, man. We want to make Melissa money. want to go 11 and 0 again. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, going through this process, I did it during the summer. I'm doing it now. I get excited. Uh, and it's knowing football. A lot of some of it's math, some of it's business. You know, and some of it is, you know, I do corporate governance all day, and this is a lot more fun <laughs> than that. But it's it's useful. You see how much ex- control they exert over things. We get ahead of it. We make money. So what's the final words? How do you guys feel? I'm ready for this weekend. Mm-hmm. And I've been looking forward to this Saturday all week. How do you feel about Ohio State and Notre Dame? We didn't cover that, did we? I think, you know, I, I studied that game. I studied Notre Dame. I studied Ohio State, and there's a lot of uh, unknowns. But uh, Notre Dame and Coach Freeman have a lot higher academic standards than Ohio State, right? Ohio State, you could have killed five people with a mask as long as you could play football. That's true. Uh, Ryan Day... He's a runaway kid. He's like Gavin Newsom. He he didn't know who his dad was. Uh, and he made something of himself, right? He's making $10 million a year as a head coach. But part of it is his obsession with football, right? What do you do with the pain? Some people drink, do drugs. Some people successfully work out. Da, da, da. He studies film. <laughs> and he's a, smart, he's a smart guy. And Marcus Freeman has not proven he can win a big game yet. 
So I'm not putting my heart on earn money because Ohio State has a brand new quarterback. Uh, Ohio State's in the first year or two-year cycle. Last year was their playoff cycle. They beat Georgia. They had Georgia beat. This year's, you know, second year of the cycle, still they could make the playoffs or whatever, but they're not at their optimal rate. He beat, he outcoached Freeman last year because he didn't get in a shootout. It was like early in the season. He didn't want to show his cards. And he outcoached him, uh, Ryan Day did, and his staff. He, and that's the thing. Ohio State doesn't have Kevin Wilson. I think he's coaching Tulsa. Kevin Wilson basically a genius, but he's an alcoholic. So that's why he got fired at Indiana. And he was a, you know, a brilliant assistant at Ohio State. Now he's at Tulsa, um, you know, saying he's in recovery. He's not there. So a lot of knows too many variables to put my hard earned money on it. But what's the total in that game? I just talked myself into the under there. Yeah, I could, it, I could even see that being under for sure. Um, where's it at? Let's see. Right, because Notre Dame has 55. 55 last year yeah. it wasn't it wasn't high scoring last year. Right. Because this is the other thing too. Uh in a conference call between the coaches in the in the Big Ten, they couldn't have it and Ryan Day and Harbaugh got kicked out because all they did was started cursing at each other. So it's personal. They said and they said it wasn't just cursing. It was very personal what they said to each other. And they're both maniacs have problems. Uh, he's, a, he ha- he's lost to Michigan two years in a row. So he has to hide a lot of plays, a lot of schemes for Michigan. It's more important to him to be Michigan than Notre Dame. But Marcus Freeman has not proven he can win a big-time ga- ga- game yet. And again, he's like Dan Lanning. He's, he's Dan Lanning light that Marcus Freeman was only a defensive coordinator two years before he became head coach at Notre Dame. And, you know, and people get diversity wrong. They think it's race. They think it's gender. It's not. It's what we have named. Uh, Melissa and Josh are young. They're in shape. They're smart. Me, I'm old. Either, you know, can be work hard. I'm not really that smart, but I do work hard. I do, do do a lot of research. I don't have the natural intelligence of Josh and Melissa. But we work together, right? That's the worst thing. Yes. Not hiring a Marcus Freeman in Notre Dame because you're a liberal Catholic school and he's black, right? So I love Marcus Freeman. That's part of the reason I'm not betting that game because we're probably rooting for him. But definitely going under 55. So we'll put that. Notre Dame, Ohio State under 55. Marcus Freeman had to beat Notre uh, USC. Yeah, he, he's got to beat them this year. It's going to be a he's tall. He's got to beat a rival. Yeah. Right? I'm taking Notre Dame. If I'm taking Notre Dame, money, money, Notre Dame money line. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like Notre Dame money line. Hey, that's I right. already took it. I already took the money line. I only put 50 right. on it, so. I'll bet I'll put two fifty <laughs> on the Josh Luna money line. We'll see Bidding that. blindly using Josh Luna. That quarterback, so, that, that, heart, that yeah. quarterback over Three there takes me bet. So Josh Luna is going money line Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish at home again. It's almost like the Washington State game. Yeah. Structurally, Notre Dame should win this. This they football. Should. They should. I think the big difference is that quarterback they got there. They finally got a QB. Right. But Ohio State is again, that's Ohio State. That's that team's not gonna just go away. Right. And one smart thing uh Marcus Freeman did, understanding he's a good recruiter and understanding his limitations, he's got coordinators, he's got coach for everything. Ryan Day is still his own offensive coordinator, and he's still his quarterback coach. So he's hands on, and you know things are different, right? And we're not psychotherapists, but you got to know a little bit of psychologists figures out things. I know I remember my brother in law. I never knew until my mom's funeral that he had been molested as a kid. 
And it made sense. That's why he always kept himself busy. Right? Because some thoughts in the back of your head are so painful, so bad. You got to do something. Right? That was him. I think Ryan Day is the same way. Because he talks about the horrible trial that he had, done it up. So he, he has to stay busy. He has to be the quarterback's coach. He has to be the office coordinator. He's the head coach. Right? He's always getting his mind around. And that's good and bad because you burn out, so on and so forth. So that's a structural advantage that uh, Marcus Freeman has. All right, man. Very exciting. Let me look at that money line. The game's going to be at 430. So that yeah. 4, 30 hour, I'm going to have the three TV offense out. We'll be slamming beers, rooting for Washington State, rooting for now I'm rooting for Notre Dame huh. in the end. Plus do. three at home. Yeah. And that's the thing. The whole state of Ohio is betting blindly Ohio State. You know? oh, yeah. They're so confident for that one. Right, right. And they just opened up the casino in Cleveland. A Myers restaurant has a, a sports betting thing in there. Sports betting kiosk. So, Notre Dame fighting Irish on the money line. Let's see, 4 p.m. You know? Uh, Patterns, right? Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. They have Washington State and Notre Dame priced at the same thing, plus 130. What does that mean, Melissa? It means that we're in business with Vegas. Vegas <laughs> thinks that Washington State and Notre Dame are probably going to cover and win outright the three points. So we're in business with Vegas. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Josh Lee. He thought that angle. I didn't have the bandwidth for it. <laughs> Josh Lee did plus 130. Under, I'm going to buy the half point 56. What do you think, Melissa? Yeah, that sounds good. Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, yes. <laughs> Always. Fun first, guys. All right. It's All the right, last thing of December. It's the end of summer. <laughs> Uh, we don't charge for picks. We give them free. Melissa and I gave you 11 and 0, 12 and 1 for free. Because you could be like these coaches or whatever. But we choose to be different, right? We choose mm-hmm. the route of, and it's good business. Because people then can trust you in business. Uh, you have less stress. You have better mental health. And the way the philosophy works is you give one, you always get 10 back, right? The whole pay it forward thing. So Winston Churchill said, and I live by it, and it's true. People that you know for 30 years, people who are your close friends, it's different than business. You give them things. And you give people things, the right people things. You can't give them asshole things. As nice as you think Josh Luna and Melissa and I are, if you mess with us, we'll slit your throat in a second. <laughs> Don't make that mistake. <laughs> Don't make it. <laughs> Don't confuse kindness and give us away for stupidity and gullibility, right? right? Being some sort of pushover. No, it's business. You have the resources to give one and give some insight. You always get 10 back. That's why Winston Churchill said, you make a living from your labor, but you make a life from what you give. Thank you for listening to the ESPC podcast now.